This is the story of how Jack Denton was canceled. Jack is a young Catholic man. When he was a senior at Florida State University, he had already served three years on the student senate. His fellow students knew about his Catholic faith. He campaigned in part on the promise to represent the views of Catholic and religious students. Despite his religious and philosophical differences with fellow senators, Jack built strong relationships with them. So strong that his fellow senators elected Jack as student senate president. Jack was doing what we want all of our leaders in politics to do, work productively with people who have different backgrounds and beliefs in order to advance the common good. But today, those types of relationships are neither common nor, in the case of Jack and his fellow senators, lasting. In the early summer of 2020, in a private text conversation that included Jack and fellow Catholic students, one student sent a link to a video aimed at raising funds for well over a dozen groups, including BlackLivesMatter.com, the ACLU, and Reclaim the Block. Jack supported his friends donating to important causes, and he said that most of the groups on the list looked like worthy causes, at least as far as he knew. But Jack also raised a caution that not every group mentioned advocates for goals that agree with Catholic faith and practice. In fact, some directly contradict it. For instance, distinguishing between the truism that Black Lives Matter and the organization by that same name, Jack was concerned that BlackLivesMatter.com opposes what it calls the Western-prescribed nuclear family structure, homes with moms and dads, typically accompanied by children while explicitly championing what they call a queer-affirming network and transgender ideology. The ACLU, another group benefiting from the video Jack and his fellow Catholics were sent, has spent decades promoting abortion, another cause that's radically out of step with Catholic teaching. And Jack warned that Reclaim the Block's demand to abolish the police is out of step with Catholic teaching to pursue the common good. It is important to know what you're supporting when you're Catholic, Jack wrote. If I stay silent while my brothers and sisters may be supporting an organization that promotes grave evils, I have sinned through my silence. That's when the outrage mob sprang into action. First, a student in the private text exchange took screenshots of Jack's texts and forwarded them to members of the student senate. Then, student senators posted Jack's private texts on social media where they called him transphobic and racist. That same day, the student senate voted on a motion to strip Jack of his position as senate president. 21 senators voted to remove Jack, 16 opposed. Short of the two-thirds approval that the student mob, sorry, senate, needed, the coup fell short. But that didn't stop them. It just meant that the outraged students had to intimidate more senators, which they did. Two days after the first vote and after a special public meeting of the student senate where Jack patiently endured over five hours of vitriol from every Florida State University student who wanted in on the action, the senate voted again, this time 38 to 3 in favor of Jack's ouster. In just 48 hours, the senate and its cancel culture allies, through social pressure, turned a close vote into a rout. But the senators who voted to remove Jack made a big mistake. They said on the record that they were removing him because of his religious beliefs. Florida State University is a public school, and its student senate is a legislative body established by state law. That means their actions are bound by the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. And under the First Amendment, students don't forfeit their religious freedom when they step foot onto a public university's campus. They also don't lose it when they get elected to the student senate. And it violates the First Amendment when the government, including members of a student senate, retaliates against someone for peacefully sharing their religious convictions. How can we make sense of this phenomenon of woke totalitarianism on American campuses? Simple. Many college students do not value basic American freedoms. Worse, they view freedom of speech, for example, as an oppressive tool used by groups in power to maintain their power. Rather than respecting Jack's individual freedom to speak consistent with his beliefs, even in private, the student senate canceled him. With the help of Alliance Defending Freedom, Jack took action, filing a federal lawsuit to uphold his freedom of speech under the First Amendment. The outcome of Jack's case could have an impact on public campuses throughout the country. When free speech wins on campus, it sends an important message to America's future leaders. And when it loses, what could that mean for our future?
Let's hope we never find out.